Hi guys, welcome to my channel Lush Gardener. I hope you guys are fine and are safe at home. So today we will be talking about how and when to repot our succulents and how we can clean and water them post repotting. Now guys, usually we tend to repot our plants only when they tend to outgrow their pots or when they get root bound. With succulents, this is not a problem because if you have a good pot size of 5 to 6 inches of depth, then the repotting will be a very rare scene because succulent roots do not run too deep, hence they rarely get root bound. And as succulents grow really slow, the issue of them outgrowing the pot is also very rare. Ideally, if you have your succulents potted in pots with depth size of 5 to 6 inches, which usually is my favorite pot size, I don't even repot them for years and they are comfortably growing in it. Remember, the less you touch and move them, the better it's for them because they do not like getting repotted every now and then. But there are certain instances wherein we tend to repot our succulents. Especially if you have purchased your succulents from local nurseries, they are going to come potted in pots. Now, it looks like our life is easy because it's already potted. But I would always advise you that after two or three days, please repot your succulents. And I'll tell you the reason why. But before that, whenever you're repotting it, ensure that you do not put any pressure on the stem. Do not try to forcefully pull out the succulent from the pot because it will snap and the stem might break. So always ensure that you try to loosen the soil by pressing against the pot. With this, it will be much easier for you to remove the succulent out of the pot without putting in much pressure. Now the reason why we tend to change the soil because as we have spoken about this earlier as well, you need to have full control over the soil. Now we do not know what kind of soil or media was used for growing succulents in the nursery. As per my experience, majority of the time what I have noticed is they tend to use a lot of coco peat and as we all know that coco peat is not a very good option for succulents because coco peat tends to retain a lot of moisture. Now apart from coco peat, I also happened to find there were a lot of coconut chips that were present in the soil. Now as you all know that my soil is very sandy and soil based, I do not have any organic matter and that's how I like to keep my succulent soil because over the years I have seen that my succulents have been doing quite well in that kind of mix. Now also another important thing when you are clearing the roots, when you're clearing the soil around the roots, also inspect if there is any kind of problem going on in the roots. If just check if there are any mealy bugs, if there is any black spots or if there are any rooting issues. Once you're done, once you feel that everything is all right, the succulent roots look healthy, you can go ahead and repot your succulents with your homemade mix. Now, usually this is also the same way or the same procedure you're going to use in case if your succulent tends to outgrow the pot. Now that's going to happen if your pot was very very small and now the succulent has grown big. So you can do the same process of repotting exactly like how we did it right now. Now as I've said that if you have a good pot size of 5 to 6 inches it's going to be a very very rare scene for you to change or repot your succulents. So once the repotting is done, we will now move the pot in a spot where it receives indirect sunlight. Now there are two reasons why we do this is one because we do not want to pressure the succulent anymore. It is already being stressed because we have moved it from one pot to another. Secondly, we do not water the pot immediately. We wait for at least four or five days because we want the roots to get adjusted to the new soil. And if you're going to put the succulent out in direct sunlight, it's going to dehydrate the succulent. Now guys, there is another instance wherein we tend to repot our succulents. Now this is nothing related with root bounding or nothing related with uh, the succulent overgrowing the pot. But over here, the pot has enough space but the succulents have started to get very clustered and there is not enough space for the air circulation which could lead to succulents getting rotted or at times the succulent leaves tend to turn brown because there is not much space. Now, whenever you're repotting it or trying to take it out from the soil, never pull the succulent out. Try to loosen the soil. You can use any kind of spade or any pointed material that can get inserted into the soil and then loosen the soil and then you can easily take out the succulent. Again, as I said, never ever put any pressure on the leaves or on the stem. The succulent will break into two if you're going to do that. Now, another important thing is because the succulent was very congested, it was in a cluster, there are going to be a lot of dry leaves. Now, it's very, very important because this is one of the best chance that you're going to get to clean the succulent and to also inspect if there is any problem. 
try to clean as much as you can also tend to take a note if there are any mealy bugs try to remove all the dry leaves as you can see because the succulents were so compact they were in such a tight cluster you can see the amount of dry leaves that are present now this is the reason why i advise you whenever you tend to make an arrangement do not push your succulents so close to each other that becomes very difficult now if this kind of arrangement is not cleaned over the time the succulents will fall sick because what's going to happen this kind of spot becomes a very good breeding spot for mealybugs for ants the ants tend to get the mealybugs and they tend to harvest them in such a space because this space is cool it is uh, dark it is moist it's damp and it is away from any kind of insects that can get in there they are completely protected in this kind of space so it becomes a very favorable spot for the mealy bugs and other bugs to uh, you know tend to grow in this kind of environment so it's always important that whenever you tend to see that your succulents are getting too compact or if they are getting too clustered it's always tend to separate them and when you do this you have a very good option you have a very good chance to do a thorough examination before putting them back into the soil because once you're going to pot them in an individual pot, you are not going to repot them unless there is a major problem with the soil or with the succulent. So this is the only chance wherein you get to check the entire succulent from the roots, from the leaves, try to clean as much as you can, try to check if there is any rotting of the stem or anything, and then you can pot them. Now, always make sure that once you are done with this, please do not tend to repot your succulents every now and then. Again, once the repotting is done, you're going to put it in a spot where it receives indirect sunlight and you're going to water after four or five days so that the roots can get adjusted to the new soil. So now there was another question a lot of people were asking related with the cleaning of succulents. Now also when you tend to repot your succulents, you might end up dropping a lot of uh, soil or a lot of dirt onto the succulent leaves. Now guys, usually with our house plants, we tend to use a wet wipe or we tend to use a cloth and try to clean all the leaves. But with succulents, you never want to do that because as you can see, there is this powdery kind of a coating on the succulent. This is very, very important because this is called as farina. You do not want to disturb this at any cost because this acts like sunscreen on succulents. I already have a video on this. I will put the link up on the i button. You can definitely check about farina. So it's very important that you do not use any cloth or a wet cloth over these succulents. Whether the succulent has farina or does not have farina, I would always advise do not use any kind of cloth to rub off the dust or any kind of dirt. You can use a soft makeup brush like you can see over here. And also when you're using this soft makeup brush, do not put in a lot of pressure. You just want to dust it off. You do not want to put any pressure on the succulent because guys, remember succulent leaves, succulent roots and the succulent stem is very, very fragile. Even though you feel that they are very stiff, but they can break with a very little pressure. So you want to be very, very gentle. Like you can see over here, this makeup brush tends to do a lot of work easy. You do not need to put in any water. You do not need to use any cloth. You can just gently brush it off and trust me most of the soil or the dirt is going to go off from the succulent without disturbing the farina because remember farina is very very important so even the makeup brush can also help you clean the mud splatters because at times what happens you're not ready for the rain and you have not covered your succulents and suddenly it rains and there is a lot of mud splatter on the leaves like you can see over here now the soft bristled makeup brush will also clean that you do not need to use any cloth you do not need to use any wet wipes now remember guys the wet wipes they tend to have some amount of ingredients like alcohol or they could have something in them that could damage the leaves of the succulent especially there are some wet wipes that do contain alcohol and if the alcohol is left on the leaves and if the sun rays are falling directly on the succulent then you might have a lot of leaf burn in case if you have used a cloth that was wet and that had water and again when the sunlight tends to fall on the leaves you are going to risk your succulent to leaf burn so be very careful you do not need much stuff another important thing if you do not have or if you're not comfortable using a makeup brush and you do not want to touch your succulent leaves 
you can get a balloon blower now a balloon blower is an amazing thing because in this you literally do not need to touch the succulent all you do is just blow off the soil i feel this is much better than the makeup brush because here you're literally not even touching the leaves and you're getting rid of all the soil and all the mud which might have fallen on the succulent during repotting or maybe due to wind or maybe it's just regular dust that is sitting on to the succulent so now coming to watering if you have been regular on my channel you know i tend to reuse and recycle a lot of old stuff now over here i have turned this plastic bottle into my watering unit this uh, particular plastic bottle tends to water at least 10 succulents in one go all i have done is made a hole on the cap and then i have used an aquarium tube you will get this aquarium tube in any aquarium shop and then i have just passed the tube through the hole and then sealed it with glue now guys what I tend to do over here is I tend to store the water for at least 24 to 48 hours before I water my succulents. The reason why is because tap water tends to contain a lot of chlorine and it contains a lot of minerals that over the time tends to build up over the soil. You might have noticed that the soil tends to have this whitish coating on the soil that's because of the mineral buildup from the tap water. Most of the time we tend to have hard water and soft water. In my case I have a lot of hard water and it tends to leave a mineral buildup on the top layer of the soil. So aging the water helps me a lot. So as you can see with the help of this tube I have watered the succulent soil without dropping any water on the succulent leaves. So guys I hope that this video was helpful to you. If it was please hit the like button. If you are new please consider subscribing to my channel. Until then take care, stay safe and keep propagating.